Thank you. So, Thank you. please. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, um, Maria, it's, uh, it's great having you here. And uh, we all love it. And uh, clap your hands again. Yeah. Thank you. So, so um, I think, or just tell us, uh, you know, where have you come from and where will you go? Uh, what, uh, where, uh, where have you been uh, today and uh, where will you be tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was on the road a little bit. I had some uh, free time this weekend, so we went to a birthday party to Mykonos, which was really nice. And from there we went to uh, Dusseldorf and then to, sh to the Schalke Arena to see Helene Fischer last oh, night, which was a amazing. Busy life, huh? Busy yeah. life, yeah. <laughs> and what about tomorrow? Where will you be? Um, tomorrow I will fly to Hamburg and from there I go to Kiel because Audi is doing the Kieler Woche there and... I will be there uh, for tomorrow night and Wednesday to so join the event. Mm? Yeah. So not hard snow, but water. So <laughs> it's the, the medium you like. Um, well, I would like to, to know today a little bit and ask you a little bit about uh, certainly your past and, and also what this has to do with the digital world of today and maybe tomorrow. Um, so uh, my question is, in your training past, uh, when you trained from your, I don't know, when you started off skiing, when was that? Uh, well, I started skiing obviously at a very two young or age, three at or the age four, of whatever. Two, but kind of professional, the whole thing got when I was like 14. Yeah. 14. And, and then did you just train, you know, like there's the hill and down and, uh, and, and, and the, the lift up again? Or how does this... this um, protocol of training how did this change when you became senior athlete or then even olympic athlete so um along your career yeah obviously it changed a lot um of course my passion was always uh, to ski and that pure thing didn't change i was always loving to ski and i was loved uh, i love to train and um but there are some more things to do when you get a professional athlete. You have to do the summer training as well, the preparation. And um, in, in considering this, uh, uh, a lot of things changed. So at the beginning, we just trained. And I think maybe not always the right things. We did training camps where everybody did the same intensity of training. And we did bike uh, uh, tracks for like five or four or six hours and for some people that was just too much you know and with the time I have the feeling that uh, not all coaches but <laughs> many are um, learning a lot and um, are improving the um, the, uh, the art of, tr of training they yeah. are m doing more individual training and um, this is the key to the success I think so it is another art uh, so the, it's the art of training the magic training uh, um, so what would you, or how would you characterize this? I mean, the, the question is, what would you say um, when, when measuring like heart rate or metabolic parameters like lactate or other things? Does this help you in performing the best art of training and the best then seeing whether you do the optimal dose of training right. or whether you did overtraining or undertraining? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, this is the one side and also considering regeneration training, it's so important to have the... the what, is, what is regeneration <laughs> training? So is this it uh, means when lying on the left side ah, rather than no, on the right? No, there is a kind of training where you can regenerate much better. This is really low intensity endurance training, but um, you know, not everybody is the same. Um, you can say, okay, um, regeneration training is uh, heart rate 100. Maybe for somebody it's too less, maybe for somebody it's uh, uh, too much. And so you have to make tests and uh, with the help of data, <laughs> you can find out the, the best um, intensity for everyone considering regeneration, but also considering uh, um, base endurance training. So actually it is then the optimal schedule, including like one cardiovascular, so this is uh, the heart rate, and then maybe also a metabolic uh, parameter into your scheme and then seeing well how the body adapts and how you will improve regarding muscle strength and, mu uh, and endurance and also then regarding third place, 
<laughs> second or first. Is that is that directly correlated? Would you say that there is optimal training then to to uh, win the gold medal? Well, of course, you know it's um, it's really hard to say. I do the perfect summer training and then. 100% I will be successful in the winter. You can never be sure because there are so many other factors. Uh, in skiing, it's a lot about the equipment and a lot about the conditions on that day when the race is taking uh, place. But um, for perfect uh, preparation in the summertime, I think it's, it's very, very important to get an individual uh, treatment. And that's what I did in my last year of, of when I was a, a skier. I was taking a, a special coach just for me. And it, my day started with measuring my... My... Uh, pulse? My, my baseline my, heart rate. My base heart rate after waking up. Yeah. And then I was sending it to him. And then he was doing my training plan for that day. And also in the winter, I told him how many uh, runs did I do in the, on the ski training. And then he said, okay, so you need for sure an hour of regeneration on the biking today. So it's actually then the technical data um, that's combined to your physical data. Um, and then this whole picture then will lead to the, the, yeah, the optimal success. Yeah. And um, you said heart rate. So that's just one parameter. So you, you, did you wear belts during those? Well, yeah. nowadays you can say during those times <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yes, so I, I, I wore a belt. And um, sometimes we, because we had uh, tests all four to six weeks where we always uh, were looking about how the development is considering endurance and also power. And then we adapted the training like this, you know. And um, it was not only about heart rate, it was also uh, about uh, lactate, like you just said. And we, we were also measuring ammoniac and... Urea, it's, I don't have the, all the English words. <laughs> yeah, uh, but so, so the, the, these are parameters, uh, just for the audience, these are parameters, heart rate is, uh, is the heart, is, that's true, or sure. Uh, and, and the other parameters is um, training to the uppermost limit, but not exceeding that. Right. And this can, be, this can be analyzed with these parameters that can be taken from from the earlobe or, or, or the, um, finger, yeah. the finger prick. Um, so... Like for today's athletes, I mean, we have we have more opportunities now. We have the opportunities to to enter all these data into a large database, and we also have the opportunity to include more data. Um, we know that there is a contact lens with a sensor in it that measures glucose and other parameters maybe in the future, or you can have a chip planted, implanted under the skin. So Sounds um, kind of scary. It, huh? is, it is scary, <laughs> but I, th this is going to be the future. I'm, I'm definitely sure about that. So, so from, from the medical perspective, from my perspective, I could say yes. Um, it, in addition to the basic parameters uh, you have been measuring, the future af of athletes will measure a lot more parameters and uh, also the public will measure with pricks uh, and sending in uh, little pieces of paper to, to labs will, will, will receive more information. So yes, you said it's scary. Will you, is this, or if this holds true, could this also be something for the athlete of the future? Yeah, I think uh, it, it definitely is, this, is, is the future, like you just said. And I also think that it has some advantages, for sure. Uh, for example, to prevent, uh, prevent injuries, you can um, measure special things in your body. And if, uh, for example, the coach sees, okay, now the lactate is going too high or she's getting too tired, then stop training or even stop racing, whatever. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an important issue yeah. Be because what, what my experience is, and, and, and you are the, the athletes, what I see, the, the more injuries or um, sicknesses an athlete has during the summer and, and, and even autumn, then in the winter, this will have the direct impact. So it is very important to, to know all that in the summer already. And yeah. this is what you probably experience as well, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, on one side, it's kind of, that's why I said it, it, it sounds scary because um, as an athlete, you are... Uh, of course, controlled, and it has to be like this. But if you mean regarding regarding doping, doing your training, uh, uh, training, okay, yeah, gosh, yes, and and what are you eating? And but there are still sometimes days, especially on holiday or whenever, that you wanna just do whatever you want. And a 
chip in your body which is measuring everything means like no privacy at all. That's yeah, why that, I said it's kind yeah. of scary. But maybe it can be deactivated while holiday. <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure. And and I, I just mentioned this issue of uh, when you when you think of athletes and uh, all, and the control system, uh, you're always uh, also thinking of doping. I I, I know that. Uh, during your times or maybe explain to the public how much you are followed or what you have to do to uh, every day. Yeah, and considering the, the anti-doping uh, uh, fight, I think it could be a big uh, step forward because for us at athletes, it's um, really crazy because we have to put in an internet system every day, every hour where you are and what you're doing. And if you forget it, to adapt one time because you changed your plans. And then you get a, a control. Um, and this three times in 18 months, then you are... Uh, uh, yeah, um, banned. Then, then you're banned. Yeah, banned. But, but this is totally crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And and sometimes there were doping controls at, at six in the morning and then... Or the night before at 10 at night and then six in the morning again because they thought that maybe we think, okay, now I got a control at night, so now I can do doping. And then the next day she came again and it was one and the same person and she went from Munich to Kitzbühel and back and then again from <laughs> Munich to Kitzbühel. <laughs> it's such a, a waste, you know, but, for but everyone. This could, be good. this could be something for for the digital world, couldn't it be? Because Because then athletes could, you know, send the data directly, don't have to, you know, Yeah, type in all yeah. these uh, things, but they are then controlled. And if they want to, they can be controlled. If they don't want to, they they right. close the the system. Or maybe with the chip, the doping uh, controller can always locate you, so that he is just following you by. But this which, is which sounds scary again, but it would be so much easier for the athletes because it's, it was such a pressure all the time. You had to think about, you don't have to, uh, you don't can forget to actualize uh, your, your, your data on, on, the, on the internet. And sometimes when you're, I don't know, in South America for summer training, not always the best internet connection is, is available, you know. It was really a problem. And sometimes I also had missed tests because of I was not able to change it. And what about, you know, if, if there are these pl uh, these chips implanted? I mean, that it is not far from here that, uh, that these chips will have the sensor technology to measure a lot of the parameters in the blood we take when we take the blood from the vein with a syringe. So... I think this this is not far from from today, maybe in five to ten years. So then we know actually what happens in the body. What about the athlete having this implanted and and the, like a detector for doping substances? Would this help you, or is it, or what? How do you think about that? Yeah, I think this is not. It, it would not only be easier for the athlete uh, to get recognized, but also just more um, shocked to at all take it. You know, I think it would be a, a, so a, would a, be a relief a for you. Prevention. Or if you if you come back, we're not <laughs> awaiting your comeback. But but if you come back or others, uh, then um, then the control, as I see, for an athlete could be following. Following the one for the control, for the doping control, and also with these chips could be something in the field of the future, although I'm a little reluctant on that. I hope a lot that this will uh, be better f in, in the future because not every country is doing the same controls, you know? And um, I think it has a, a big potential to, to, to increase or to secure the, the anti-doping uh, system because athletes who are not cheating, they are in, an, in a disadvantage sometimes, yeah. in special sports especially. Yeah. My last question to you. Um, what about the, what do you think your control of an optimal training? Uh, is this something for the audience? Is this only limited to an elite athlete or maybe also a leisure time athlete or... Um, just anybody who will like to start exercising to lose weight, things like that? Yeah, it, it always depends on what are people's goals, I think. So for for people, for normal people, it 
definitely could be an option considering uh, special uh, goals. And I think the, the whole trend uh, nowadays is going into more fitness, more health. And um, f considering all these topics, it's a uh, great innovation if, if as long as everybody can decide what he's doing and what he wants yeah. to do. The optimal dose for the optimal effect you with uh, uh, you showed that it it'll work when it works, and uh, for the obese or diabetic or other patient, yeah. it, those uh, people also have to have the optimal dose of exercise. Thank you for coming. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.